a number of people read the script and just kind of said, what the hell is this? And whether other people agree with me or not, I, you know, I, I kind of don't mind because I know that I'm making a movie that I would really want to see. It's one of the stories where a character sets off on a quest to learn something about the world, but ultimately comes back to learn something about himself. He's not having a good time. I'm really speechless. I mean, I've been here for a week now, and everything about the movie has so completely exceeded my expectations. I mean, I want to play it, like, as a two-shot, really. <laughs> One shot here of Christian on a little tighter lens, kind of like this, sort of looking over at her. Okay. And so that's from this angle. And then from the same angle, this is really right down here on the floor. We need to get a weird 10 millimeter shot of her picking up the phone at 48 frames per second. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to write something that came as much from my gut as possible without regard for what, you know, the market, whether there would be an audience for it. I just, at the time in my life, I just, it was important for me to learn how to write stuff that was, that I found fulfilling. I was looking to direct something that I didn't write because of the, all the films I've done up to this point have been movies that I've written and directed. So I wanted to do something that someone else had written, so I was looking around for stuff. Kind of forces Trevor to say, no, he didn't. He just kept blowing right through. Right. I mean, when I was writing, one of the reasons why I thought, well, this movie couldn't really be made uh, is because of the Trevor's character, the whole weight loss issue. And never in my wildest dreams did I think an actor would actually go to the lengths that Christian has gone to. Scott's script is described as a a walking skeleton, essentially. Help me! I need some help here! It feels great. It feels like a kind of a victory because I did kind of just emaciate and destroy myself, and, you know, to the point where I kind of just watching me run is a joke because I just have no leg muscles or anything. Everyone was kind of like uh, very shocked by how thin he was, but at the same time, part of me was going, like, "That's great. He looks perfect." You know what I mean? Let me call it. I have a whole nother movie about guilt that I could write just as a result of watching this man walk around 120 pounds not eating for weeks. Um, I just didn't think it was possible. I didn't eat. That was it. We spent probably two and a half years going to various companies in the States looking for financing for The Machinist. Bueno, esta película eh, es una, quizá uno de los proyectos atípicos de la casa porque eh, a mí me llega como muy arropado dentro de, la, de los propios ejecutivos de, de la compañía. Bueno, era excepcional porque era una, peli, una película en principio eh, de, de riesgo, no era una película fácil. El, el guión del maquinista llegó a través de un amigo que en este caso sabía que había gustado mucho al director y que, que estaba muy interesada en trabajar con él. 
Um, sí. Recuerdo que me envió el guión al hotel, lo leí y inmediatamente pensé que era una película que, que podíamos traernos a, a España a rodar y con Brad Anderson ya pues ofreció unas garantías importantes el proyecto. Nosotros sí que hemos creído en su capacidad visual eh, y hemos depositado mucha confianza en que nos hiciera la película que nos explicaba que estaba viendo, que coincidía con la que nosotros queríamos ver. Well, the real, the only issue for me was whether or not we were going to be able to make Barcelona look like Los Angeles. I mean, nobody thought when we first read The Machinist that we'd be filming it in Barcelona. It seemed like the, the last place. Cada localización, cada cada día en un espacio exterior. Pues por muy bien elegido que estuviese, pues había que hacer una intervención y en general bastante grande como para hacer que el espectador, hasta el espectador americano cuando la vea, no sepa que eso no se ha rodado en la costa oeste de América. I think I got the reputation for being somewhat kind of obsessive on this shoot, having to be the guy who was, you know, watching over every little exact detail. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll just stick them on here, like, you know. Normally, if I'm making a movie in New York, I'm not normally sitting there concerned about, uh, you know, if the license plates are all American, you know? <laughs> Or, you know, that the sign at the end of the street is an American stop sign and not a European stop sign. Okay, good. I don't know, it kind of says something about the United States a little bit that for us to make it look like the U.S., we've kind of filmed in all of the worst areas of Barcelona. Brad's great. I think he's, um, I really enjoyed working with him. Uh, he's really s smart, he's very easygoing, he's very um, direct. Uh, maybe it's just the way it needs to be played. What, or what, what if he starts saying this, he said, I, I, I trust him. Look, just, uh, we lose that? I don't think it works. Address him. When he mentioned Jennifer's name like a few months ago, I thought that is so absolutely perfect. Action. She's very good at expressing vulnerability. She plays these very sort of tortured, vulnerable characters in a lot of her movies, and that's absolutely at the heart of the character she's playing in this movie, uh, the character of Stevie. And breath. Action. Why is he doing this? I thought it was a great character study about insomnia. For me, that was the most sort of intriguing thing, like what happens to a person that doesn't sleep and how their world is so altered and how important sleep is to be sane and healthy. of a machine as a man operating very dangerous heavy, heavy machinery while being as fatigued as this character is and having you know and being sleepless for a year there's some perverse kind of attention to it that I think Hitchcock would have liked
His life is essentially something that in the present, he's just consumed with anxiety. And he has this intense fear of something that's going to happen. Alfred is uh, reaching down, or I should say, reaching up from beyond the grave. Vale, señores, atentos, por favor. You kind of hold the belt, but it, for a, a second, like you're kind of holding it back, and then it's just too much, and it takes it. We need to create some little hook or something that it kind of gets like caught underneath this here. That's the right. We'll get reactions like that. I hadn't seen much of Aitana outside of that uh, walk in the clouds uh, with Keanu Reeves, um, and she was—I thought she was quite lovely in that film and very endearing. And that's sort of the character I wanted Marie to play, you know. You're doing this very. You can see why Trevor went to that, goes to that cafe every night and gets his pie and coffee because he, he he thinks this this woman's. She's lovely and she radiates something. La verdad es que me estimula mucho rodar en, en otros idiomas porque lo que a priori puede ser un, un problema o una dificultad añadida eh, se convierte en un estímulo. Para mí es como otra piel más del personaje, es, te ayuda a, eh, no sé, a expresarte de una manera determinada, a moverte. With Christian, and actually with most of the actors on this project, uh, there was so little that I felt I needed to do, because they got, they, they got the character right off the bat. I am, uh, I'm just getting some makeup test. Some little scar that is like that. And uh, I'm just looking at the beginnings of the prosthetics. You could use like a mold of a real toe, right? Yeah. This is, this is a glove that you... Well, it's a little bit clear like this. This is the big toe from my left foot. And this is the finger of my right. Vale, pues vamos a por la primera, chicos. Todo cerrado. Vale, chicos, vamos un poquito de tiempo. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Chavi is shooting it, it feels perhaps as much like a Kafka or a Dostoevsky novel as, as any film that I've seen. Estamos haciendo la casa de Trevor, sin luz. I hope there's something about the look and the feeling and the tone uh, that feels a little bit uh, like an anachronism, like something from another era, you know? a little bit otherworldly. No eran, no eran rodables, se dice rodables en el término cinematográfico. ¿no? Estábamos poco obligados 
por lo que encontrábamos. given the tour of the Barcelona sewer system, <laughs> which is some kind of tour. When I saw that, that location and saw those cool tunnels just disappearing off into the distance, it felt like this should be the place that he ends up. He should end up down in the sewers, in, the, in like the pit, you know? Shooting in that sewer wasn't easy. Um, it was real, real raw human sewage flowing under our feet. But just to show Trevor, just to show Christian's commitment, you know, we offered him to wear like special rubber boots under his wardrobe, but he was he refused. So he was running through, a, you know, a stream of raw human waste <laughs> with no any kind of protection or anything. I admire immersion very much, um, but I'm not going to take that to stupid lengths. I'm not going to do it for the sake of it. It's only worth it if you're, if it's for telling a really great story. La verdad que la película era una peli, una película compleja para el equipo de tanto de cámara, de maquinistas como de eléctricos. Es una película que nos ha arrastrado, o sea, físicamente y psicológicamente. O sea, la hemos vivido con una intensidad brutal. Well, I don't think I'd jump off a building to, uh, you know, finish my movie or put a bullet through my head. Maybe even go on your knees like this. But this has been an accident-prone shoot. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, like four or five people suffered bodily harm in the making of this movie. <laughs> Well, there is no pain, no gain, as they say. Yeah. I sprained my ankle, tore a tendon. So now I am in rehabilitation. Right. And then, uh, you know, shortly after I got off my crutches, my back went out. I directed the movie from a gurney. Nacho, man. You were, it seems like it's quite comfortable to you direct the film, no? Getting all of the most embarrassing moments possible. <laughs> you have to suffer through the process, but you also are obligated to bring all the other people down with you. And that's what's difficult. We were in exterior at 40 degrees, that the people were sick of the sun. This is an it's a Shooting a movie in Spain in August is not the wisest of ideas. If it's August, we're in June. If it's August, we're in August. When it comes July, it's... We're shooting in the interior at 38 degrees with a high percent of humidity. We were like in the sauna. Uh, it's it, it's something that I found with losing a lot of weight. You're able to deal with the heat. Yeah. Working with Filmax has been, uh, they've been incredibly supportive and unlike a lot of American uh, studios, they've been, they have allowed me to uh, realize the film my own way and that's been a, a real like 
great thing. And then we'll do one more on Itana and the other and on the Indian guy. Here's the intersection. Um, the mushroom is right here. Oh, that's just different. The idea, right? Yeah. Trevor's car is coming down here. And so let's see, how would that work? She's carrying all the groceries and falls out of her groceries and he runs to pick it up. He tries to pick it up. When you get to the middle of the street, you're gonna knock it off, it's gonna fall to the ground, you're gonna reach down, pick it up, and then you're gonna and you put it, try to put it back together, and then I'm gonna yell, not you, and you're gonna look up at the, at the It's a good frame to end. So the kid, the kid, uh, maybe if we can move him even a little further that way. Good, the, the plane is good actually, we like the plane. Essentially our cue is when the boy this is the middle of the street, right? Mm. Trevor's coming down here. over here she realizes that her son is like didn't is not right behind her but stop because right in this position Anthony stops to pick up the ice cream and that's where Trevor Feels like it's been a long shoot. I mean, it has, I don't know, 40 days isn't outrageously long, but it's not, well, it's not a really short shoot either. We're done, and uh, I think we got essentially everything I needed to get. No, I'm very excited. I think everyone's ready to finish. Poder eh, tener a ese director, a ese actor, esa actriz, esa, ese, ese equipo con el que tú has soñado en algún momento y poder decir es posible tenerlos, a mí me parece algo absolutamente fascinante, como todo lo que está relacionado con el cine. You've got to just say to yourself, do I think it's good? Do I think I've done a good job on this? And that's it. And that, I get my satisfaction from working on it right here, right now. Above all, regardless of whether the movie's good or bad, there's always that sense of like, well, you know what, we did it. Am I, can I clip, unclip? Are we done? <laughs>